the definition of hope, as I understand it, is my expectation of the future. And it's only going to be as strong as the evidence on which it's based. So that <clears throat> for me now, there come into play the whole set of evidences, particular and specific evidences that Christianity is true. They split into two parts. There is what I call the objective side of it, the historical side of it, the fact that Christ lived, did certain things, died, and then, all importantly, the fact that I believe that we can access evidence for the resurrection. Now, very frequently, people come in here and say, what is the evidence, what is the evidence, what is the evidence? And I got so concerned about this recently, I thought it would be very interesting to take the criteria for witnesses of a skeptic, David Hume, the famous Scottish Enlightenment um, philosopher, and apply them to the resurrection of Jesus. And in the last two chapters of my book, Gunning for God, you can see an analysis looking at that evidence. And I sit here partly because of some of my lawyer friends, actually, which is why I'm so happy this man is a lawyer. I remember sitting in Cambridge in King's College in 1963 with a huge crowd of people listening to one of the most distinguished lawyers in Great Britain. And he says, I am a lawyer. What I'm going to do is to conduct a forensic investigation of the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. It was fantastic. I'd never heard anything like it before. So he said, let's deny the resurrection. Now let's look at history. His name is Sir Robert, uh, Sir Norman Anderson. And his little book is still available. And that kind of thing led to me suddenly realizing, gosh, this is intellectually solid. You can commit yourself to it. So there's that side of it. I believe that Christianity is objectively true. But then, uh, why is my hope not a false hope? It's the test proving that it works. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for instance, Christ claims that if a person trusts him for forgiveness of sins, they get peace with God and a new life. I've seen that happen thousands of times. In my own life, in my marriage, I've seen marriages rescued. I've seen people come out of drug abuse. I've seen people on the verge of suicide, and they come to trust Christ, and their lives are totally changed. When you see that happen again and again, you begin to think there's something in this. Because Christ makes claims that if we trust him, these things will happen. When they do happen, that is evidence. And I sometimes, I think I said this on Monday night, you know, when you look at the false hope, which I believe atheism is, I'm very happy to come back here in a year's time and you bring 50 people whose lives have been utterly transformed for the good by atheism. And I will bring 50 or 500 or 5,000 whose lives have been transformed by Christianity. In the end, it must be based on evidence. And that's why it's not a false hope. And that's why I spent my entire life asking the kind of questions that would show me that it was a false hope or a delusion if it were.